you know, during the season, the most important person in the league office is the head of officiating and the person who is the conduit to the fans and the media, although it feels like that spot's been vacated ever since Dean Blandino left. In the off season, the most important job is who's setting the schedule. And that's never really crystallized for us until this year. I think they were a little too candid with it. I think the thing that knocked down the wall was the comment about the Jets kind of owe us one. Yes. I think those are that's two when things. people kind of, that's when people were like, wait a minute, wait a minute. They're in a position where they can really mess with certain teams and help other teams under the guise of, hey, we're just setting the schedule. Somebody's got to set the schedule. Yeah. But again, when we think about this age of legalized gambling, and maybe the answer is the sports books shouldn't take any action on Super Bowl 59 champion, division champion, over, under on wins, or hey, if you bet, and maybe that's the message. Folks, if you're going to wager on those things, wait till keep the in mind the out. fact that so, – wait till the schedule is out yeah. because they're working there to help some teams and screw other teams, and they're going to admit it. Oh, maybe they owe us one. How dare, how dare Aaron Rodgers tear his Achilles tendon four plays, and how dare the Jets do that to us? They owe us one. We're going to put him in primetime six times in 11 weeks, even though they haven't been to the playoffs since 2010. Yeah, it, that, that, it definitely showed their hand, in my opinion, uh, with both of those scenarios, whether it's the Chiefs comment or you know, the Jets owing them one. Certainly, you know, whether it's competitive balance or just plain old bottom line dollars, it's probably a little bit of both there. Right. I mean, yeah, you know, they, they certainly can make the argument as, as I would too. Hey, the Chiefs are the greatest thing to watch on TV right now. That's can't miss football. You know, you, you say the phrase all the time. They play with their food. They can be up 27 to nothing. And all of a sudden you can look back and go, wait, they're down 28, 27. And then they come back and win the game. And it's like, oh, my gosh, this was a great day to watch football. So they're, they are can't miss that way. But with those comments, yeah, it makes you think that I don't know, the NFL's kind of playing got a little bit in this situation for for lack of a better way to say it well and it's all flowing from this ongoing push for more standalone games they're laying the foundation for in-game betting you get one game on you get people locked onto their phones they're making the wages throughout the game that's where the ball is moving so more standalone games allows people to kind of collectively gather and they like the big numbers that come from the primetime games but if you're going to have games you know six days of the week for the chiefs for example as one coach told me last week we need to have a second buy before we get before we even get to 18 games. We need a second buy. You can't move these teams around like this and have only one week off when you're going to play those. And it's not playing. I'm not saying in a pejorative way they're playing games. If they're going to advance this business objective yeah, right. of having games every day of the week, and I think it's coming where it's going to be Tuesday and Wednesday as well. It's just a matter of time on a regular basis. They'll do it once they cross that bridge of oh, it's no it's no difference to the players. Sunday to Sunday versus Sunday to Thursday. Once you accept that as true, play the games whenever you want. Yeah. Work it out. Work out the schedule to well, play the games on Sunday, then Saturday, then Friday, then Tuesday, then Wednesday, then this, then that. And we get all these standalone games. But you got to find a way to give teams more rest if you're going to that, do That's that. what it is. More rest. An extra bye week you know, will be the thing. I think we'll hopefully give them a little more wiggle room to figure out, hey, you know, we can play this team – uh, on a you know a Monday night, and then have them come back and play you know the next Wednesday or Thursday or whatever, right? You know, to so to lessen the blow of some of these maybe short weeks you'd have a little bit, and let guys have a little other way of recuperating, rejuvenating their body. You know, that that's why I think I would be in favor of the you know we talked about in years past of. You know, you'd love to see the the teams that play on Thursday night go in from a bye week the week before, so it's ten or eleven days since they last played instead of the four or five days. Can the league find a way to do that? I would hope with the extra bye week they could find you know some more creative ways. Well, we still have games every day of the week and all that. We can we can make sure we're not exhausting players with just four days of rest or three days of rest as it may be. How about this fact? And yeah. I'm going to defer to Pete that it is indeed factual. Whoa, that's risky. chatter about Are this, sure? but I haven't drilled it down. Man, I know, I know. In the last five seasons, no team has had to play three games in a 10-day span. Yeah. Basically, you play a Monday, a Sunday, and a Thursday. Last five years, grand total of teams that have had to do it, zero. This year, according to Pete, Unconfirmed, unverified, but I'll defer to him on that with that caveat. I think I've seen this six around. teams. Yeah, yeah. Six teams have to do it. It's happened zero times in five years. This year, 
six teams. The Jets, again, what the hell did we do to deserve this? We've sucked for 15 years. The Jets have to do it. The Seahawks, the Saints, the Cowboys, the Bengals, and the Bears all have to do the Monday, Sunday, Thursday, three games in 10 days. The Jets do it right out of the gates. Yeah. And the Jets have another Sunday, Thursday in the first half of the season for crying out loud. But six teams. Something's wrong with that picture. Definitely. And and I think it tells me they used to be sensitive to that, and now they don't care. Yeah. They just don't care. No. Doesn't, because doesn't seem the like objective it. is maximum ratings, maximum games that they regard as compelling, play with those pieces on the chessboard in a way that advances our business interest, competitive balance, competitive integrity, integrity of wagering, whatever else goes into it, forget about it. Yeah. We want to be able to craft this this master schedule that is all about the Benjamins and not about the balance. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry, 345, if you don't like being told the truth, but it's the truth. And really, if he just hadn't said the Jets kind of owe us one, we might not have figured it out until next year. Yeah, I, I, at the I, earliest. I, I, you know, I, I'm surprised by both comments. You know, ch- Chiefs or Jets related. I, I'm surprised with you know one. Yeah, I think it's it's gone out the window. The the hell with the the player rest or any of that. It's just you know go ahead. We got a bottom line. We got a number in our head that we want to hit, and we're gonna hit it. And we don't care about players, coaches, anything. Move forward. That that seems to be the approach of the NFL. But like what I also like with the competitive balance, like where I would argue just a little bit is like the Jets, the Saints and the Bears. Right. I mean, the Bears had the number one pick of the draft. I know it was because of the Carolina Panthers. Their pick was number nine. But like, had they reached the primetime status yet of where we want to do that to them? A young football team that's kind of trying to find their way. Right. That that didn't make sense to me that they did that. But, yeah, there's a lot of instances of. Weird scheduling this year. You know, you talk about the 49ers and all the travel they're going to have to do and that they're going to play four teams that are going to have a bye week before them. Like, what? That's crazy. That that, that doesn't make sense. Man, the 49ers are going to have to play four games of like, wait, the other team got to prepare for us for two weeks and we only got half that time. And I think in one of those weeks, they're only going to get like six days to prepare for that team. That, 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 that does not seem fair. And I do think the league needs to maybe – Think of some better ways to remedy remedy these type of situations. And I think the other bye week is the thing that's going to help this out a little bit. You know, I have to confirm this, but my recollection is that the Saints and the Bears were two of the teams that were opposed to the Thursday night flexing ah. last year. Remember oh. how that was a big deal? Yeah. And there was a sense last year that the teams that opposed it got multiple short weeks. Because there were like six teams. In it. And when, when you look at the schedule last year, and maybe we should have been a little more sensitive to how they can mess with you. But, hey, you didn't give us what we wanted, so we're going to stick it to you in the schedule. They, that, that's the thing. The schedule becomes this platform for all sorts of agendas and retribution now. Once we've kind of acknowledged the fact that they use it to whatever end they see fit, it, it may not be simply maximized ratings. It may be... I don't like that person, and I'm going to screw their team. I, I'm not saying they did it, no. but I'm saying that that's on the table now. Well, yeah, there's obviously some thinking of, you know, hey, this team owes us. Oh, hey, this team's really good, and they keep dominating. Let's make it harder on them. I mean, let's give them a hard, the hardest schedule in football. I mean, that's a glaring comment to me. I, it is, and uh, you know, and I know the Chiefs can handle it. We know that. But, yeah, I I do think it gives you a little inkling into their mindset there. No question, Mike. All right. uh, Pete just pasted in that reports say the Saints were in favor of Thursday Night Flexing. I think they eventually came around, but they were initially against it. Plus, the league doesn't like the Saints dating back to Bounty Gate. So, either way, it's on the table now. It's all fair game. Once they admit that motivations other than a fair and competitively balanced schedule is their goal. Once they admit that, it's all fair game to speculate on why certain teams have gotten certain schedules and why certain teams are included in this group. Because it should be, if you're going to have six teams, it should be the six best teams. The teams that finished the best last year. That would be Those are the ones be. who should have to exactly. deal with that. Right. Because you get lower draft picks, you get a tougher 
slate of opponents and you get, you know, put in a tougher spot with your your overall schedule yeah. and your rest or lack thereof. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.